Modifications to a Stuart Beam Engine Part 1 A few Stuart Steam Engines use the same components. These include the cylinder castings and the valve gear. The problem with the design is that the valve gear often works loose and changes the valve timing. Here is a simple solution to the problem. And I am using a Stuart Grasshopper Beam Engine to illustrate this. The problem is not really with the design, it's the way the components are fitted together, just using 7BA slot headed group screws which are far too weak for the job. These group screws are very small and if you apply too much pressure with the screwdriver what usually happens is that one half of the slot head just breaks off. And this type of valve gear is quite difficult to move so requires to be fixed firmly to the shafts. Just to illustrate this, let's have a look at the standard engine. This was built in 1896 and it needs a little bit of attention to say the least. I'll be working on this in the very near future. But as you can see on this old engine, the valve gear is very simple. It's an eccentric connected to an eccentric rod, which in turn moves the valve spindle in and out. Very simple, quite unlike the valve gear on a Stuart Victoria, a Stuart Beam, a Stuart Grasshopper Beam and one or two others. I don't think I've ever had a beam engine of this design that hasn't gone wrong in the area of the valve gear near the valve chest. This really old engine built in the last century is extremely bad. It was given to my friend James Evans and the idea is for me to fix this, make it run make a new flywheel for it because that's missing, but make it look like it's never been repaired. It's going to make quite an interesting series because I will have to repatinate some of the parts using a special mixture. Sorry about my voice, I'm still not myself. I'm only six days from when I had my right-hand side kidney removed. So I'm still a bit under the weather and in considerable pain, but such is life. Time to get to the point. As you can see, this engine does not work. The shaft that operates the valve gear just moves back and forth, but that's about it. The fix I have for this is really simple. I could use Loctite 603, that would do the job, but that's a very messy way to do it, and it's fairly permanent. My idea is simpler. First of all, I'm looking at the engineering standard, and it is what you would expect from a factory machine kit from Stuart Models, which as far as I am aware is exactly what it is. I really don't think that the big, ugly, ill-fitting lock nut is required on the eccentric rod, so I'm going to remove it, it's looking better already. But then I remove the entire pin because I want the eccentric rod to be well out of the way for the next part of the operation. Here you can clearly see the two 7BA group screws single slot heads and they just press onto the shaft which is very small. When I first got this engine it actually did work, then I left it in my display cabinet for about a year, the valve gear got a bit sticky and then it didn't work. So I'm going to make it so that it works whether I put it in the cabinet for a year, two years or five years. The first thing to do is to remove the valve gear entirely, including the gunmetal mountings. Here I'm undoing the nuts on the end of the cross shaft that moves the valve rod. And now with my very small thin screwdriver, I'm removing the 7BA grub screws. Once I undid the bolts that are holding the bearing in place, everything was able to be taken off and sat on the bench. And here I'm doing just that. I have a socket which is just the right size for this job. I don't mean the right size for the bolts, I mean the external diameter, because a lot of the time with these sockets the external diameter is too big to fit near the part I want to undo. Sometimes I machine the external diameter to make it a bit smaller so that it fits, but this one's okay. Now with the valve operating gear removed, the next part of the job is to degrease all of it using some cellulose thinners in a plastic tub and a small toothbrush. Always do this in a well ventilated area. To do this job I need to completely disassemble the valve gear 
So I'm removing one of the cranks from the upright that operates the crossbar. And just in case you're interested, the red spot on the back of my hand is where one of the cannulas was removed after the operation. This is one of the cranks and it was a bit of a tight fit on the rod that operates the valve gear. So I treat it to a bit of needle filing just to make it slightly bigger and now it's very free just like the other one. You don't always have to do this. The reason this was tight was because the nut had been over tightened on the pin that goes through it. As usual, I say to people watching these videos, do not over tighten small model parts. And I also recommend that people over 50 get their prostate specific antigen tested like I did. It's just a blood test, it's called a PSA test, it's really simple. And for myself and several of the people I know, it saved our lives. I really don't get it. I got a comment this morning with a viewer saying, oh, I really don't want to know about prostate problems. I'm not interested. I would say, where ignorance is bliss, tis folly to be wise. I had a simple PSA test, and it was found to be elevated. I had prostate cancer, and after some hormone therapy and five days of radiotherapy, the cancer was destroyed and my current PSA level is 0.10. Back to the job at hand, what I'm doing now is drilling a detent. I'm using the same size drill as a 7BA bolt, and please note I am not drilling the hole all the way through. A detent is just a depression to take the tip of a bolt or a group screw. And this is what I mean. Once I re-thread the hole in the fitting and fit a 6BA group screw with the end ground to a point, this should hold the part very rigidly in position. This clip shows the 6BA tap still in place after I threaded the hole. And now, with the group screw fitted on the Allen key, so I don't burn my fingers, I'm shaping the inside end of it to match the detent in the cross shaft. Once this grub screw is tightened into the rocking arm, it's going nowhere. I repeated the process on another grub screw. The end of it is already at an angle, but I wanted the angle to match the detent. After threading the part 6BA, I checked that the 6BA grub screw fitted and it was perfect. Then once again on the belt sander, I shaped the end as shown here. This is really to shorten the grub screws, I don't want them sticking out too far. But because the inner end of the grub screws is pointed, they are a perfect fit into the detents that are drilled on the shaft. In this clip I've reassembled the valve operating mechanism and it feels a whole lot better. This engine needs quite a lot more attention than I'm showing at the moment, I'll do that in a later episode. Once again I'm drilling a detent in the shaft, but this time it's at 90 degrees to the other detents. I've drilled it a bit deeper than this, but I'm sure by showing you this clip you get the idea. Just as before I threaded the rocking lever 6BA to accept a grub screw, ground the grub screw to a point, just like all the others, and now this assembly is very strong. Everything's looking good. The upright rocking lever is in exactly the right place relative to the other two at 90 degrees. Once again, I'm sorry about the voice. Six days after the operation, I'm still a bit weak. There is much more to come in this series. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.